Hello and welcome. I was recently working on a ray tracer in WebGPU and I ran into some issues with memory alignment. I was trying to write some information to a uniform buffer and read it off on the shader side and I was getting unexpected results. Let's go through a simple example. Okay, so here we have a struct definition of a camera. We have a position as well as a forwards, right, and up vector. Now, if I think about how this is set out in memory, I would expect everything to be tightly packed. And in fact, it is. So the memory layout for this would be something like this. So there we have it. Our um, components of our vector are four bytes each, and they are sort of packed along like that. Now, I would expect that when I throw this data off to the shader, we would grab the first, uh, first three floats, put them in the first field, grab the next three floats, put them in the next field, and so on, and so on. But that's not actually how um, memory operations, memory accesses work in shaders. The shader has sort of a fixed bandwidth, which is a power of two, and it grabs that many floats, and it can grab less so long as it's a power of two. So if I wanted to just get the first component, we would grab four floats, use a bit mask to get rid of the bottom three and just pick the first one or something like that. Um, so this is the way the shader sees the data. It sees the first the first access block has the first four floats and then the next four floats and then the next four floats. Okay, so if I want to get position, that's simple enough. I mean, what I do is I access the first block zero out the second element, and then that's my position. If I want to get the forwards on the shader side, that's a little bit more difficult because some of the forwards data is packed in the first block, some of the forwards data is packed in the second block. So what do we do? We access the first block and then zero out the appropriate elements, access the second block, zero out the appropriate elements. So then we have two blocks with the fields that we need. We need to sort of merge them together. So then there's some more operations to sort of merge them together to get the three elements that we need and put them in. And shaders do not do this, okay? This is, it's not the business of a graphics shader, of a graphics, you know, hardware to be really clever about these operations. Plus this operation is something like double the number of operations as this one. So it's going to execute in something like twice the time, which is really bad. So for this reason, we just have simple access, which is we only grab one block at a time. And for that reason, what we'd really be doing is we would be grabbing the first block, zeroing out the last field, throwing that into position grabbing the second block, zeroing out the last field and throwing that into forwards. Well, now forwards has been set incorrectly because it doesn't have the X component and it has an X component, which is unneeded. It's from a, the different vector. And then, yeah, so as you can see, the data sort of drifts and gets corrupted. So what can we do? Well, there's two options. One option is to take this data and write it to an intermediary um, buffer of some sort, like an array or something. I often use images and put in appropriate padding. So what we could do, for instance, is we take uh, the position X, position Y, position Z, and then throw in a zero to pad. And then we go uh, forwards X, forwards Y, forward Z and throw in a zero to pad it. Um, 
And yeah, I mean, that sort of works. Sort of works. The downside to that is, I mean, consider it as an option. It's available to us. There is a downside to it. And the downside to it is that on the program side, you need to sort of write little programs to pack data into images. And then on the shader side, you need to sort of write programs to unpack from images. And I have done this in the past, so it's not the worst thing, but we're just looking at other options. Um, and then another option is, for instance, if we're in C++, we have a macro called align as. And what that does is it sort of sets the alignment. So it automatically does this padding and we don't need to worry about that. We'd sort of have to do that for each of these elements. So imagine it's here for each of these fields and that will construct the same underlying memory model, which will be read in the same way by the shader. There's another sort of cool benefit to this, and that is if we have a, like, let's say we have up, and then after up, we have uh, sphere count. This is just pseudocode, by the way. I'm just, yeah. Okay, so if this sphere count is aligned with an alignment of four bytes, which is the size of a sphere, then the program's pretty smart. And what it does is it says, okay, I'm going to write in the up vector. And then instead of putting a zero, well, I've got a, I've got a float here ready to go. That'll fill the spot. So it just puts that float in there and saves a bit of space. So yeah, that's uh, just something to be mindful of. As another example, because why not? Let's say we have a sphere struct. Okay. And this is sort of laid out in memory. So we have the center, the radius, and the red, green, and blue. Now, we do need to put in, we do need to put in some padding there. So we'd sort of declare our alignment. Or any other method you want. So we could pack this in as pixels as well. That would work fine. So when the shader goes to read this, it has these fields. Remember that we can only access sort of four bytes at a time. Might actually be a large number, but I'm just gonna go with four, four floats, sorry, I mean. Okay, so to access the center, what we do is we grab that first block, ignore, so zero out the last component and stick it in. To get the radius, we grab the first block, zero out everything else, by doing bit shifts and put it in. And the, the graphics card might even be smart. It might even be able to um, sort of do these both on the same result. So, you know, reduce the number of memory accesses. But here's the point. The point is we can absolutely access a block and do a simple bit mask operation and then store the result. Graphics card is fine with that. It's when we have variables that sort of cross over boundaries of alignments, then it sort of doesn't like that because we have the situation where we have to do extra work like uh, what we were doing before. This isn't, these are simple access bit masks. These are sort of access twice, bit mask, merge, as too much, as too much work. So yeah, that's the importance of memory alignment. Now, another thing to mention is how does the compiler sort of pack these spheres together? Because we might need to use these sorts of um, padding calculations later on in order to calculate padding for our own uh, structures and things. It's definitely shown up at least a few times in the stuff that I've seen. So let's say that we have a sphere <clears throat> and we have our center, our radius, and our color. 
So <clears throat> our center starts at an offset of zero and it has a size of 12. Our radius, because of the way this is aligned, will, um, yeah, have a size of four. So it'll fill up to byte 16. Um, our color has an offset of 16, a size of 12. So in general, we'd be expecting our sphere to have a um, size of 28 and an alignment of 16, because the alignment is the maximum alignment out of all the struct sizes. And we want for, for we've specified that our VEC threes need to be 16 aligned because that's what our graphics card is expecting. So if we were to sort of lay this out, we would have sphere one and sphere two. Sphere one <clears throat> would have an offset of zero. It would start at the start of our sort of memory block. And then sphere two, <clears throat> Well, sphere one ends at byte 28, but to keep the alignment of 16, we need to start sphere two at um, 32, which means we need four bytes of padding. So here's the formulae for padding. We have It's a lot of modular arithmetic. So we have the alignment minus the, the offset under mod alignment and so on. So for example, our sphere two has an alignment of 16. It has an offset of 28. Take that under mod 16. And then it's that result under mod 16. So this is 16 minus uh, 12, that is an alignment of four. Um, so in order to speed up the calculations, we can sort of condense this down to um, bitwise operations. So under two's complement, to take the modulus of something, so to take mod 16, to take mod 16, um, we need a number between 0 and 15. Now we have 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. Okay, so 5 bits, essentially. Now if we take this number here, this, this will give us a bit mask that gets rid of everything up to 16. So the sum of these numbers is 8 plus 2, is, uh, 8 plus 4 is 12, plus 2 is 14, plus 1 is 15. So if we take any number and we end it with this bit mask, and it doesn't matter, we can have as many numbers up here as we want, they'll just be 0. If we end it with this bit mask, it will reduce it to mod 16, for instance. So if we do this, our padding will be, um, we have a line minus offset under modulus alignment, which will be the bitwise and with a line minus one, and then mod with alignment again. So do that again. All right, so now if we were to sort of expand this all, we would have um, Okay, so just expanded that. Now, if we were to look at a line and a line minus one, well, to go back to this bit mask, the align is 16, which is that number there. Now, if we take the and of those, that will always be zero. So we have zero minus, and then here we go offset and align minus one. And then we and it again with a line minus one. Now anding twice with the same mask will do nothing. So really this is um, zero minus um, offset. Sort of like that, yeah.
Okay. So then we have, okay, so we've calculated our padding. Then we need the aligned sort of location for the structure. So the aligned structure will start at its offset plus its padding. And then it's, this is the part where in my research, it gets a little vague on the execution. I tried a number of things, didn't quite turn out so well. So I'll just give the formula, but I'm sure that info is out there somewhere. Um, we have offset plus a line minus one, bit masked, bitwise and with not a line minus one. So let's at least give an example. For the sphere, we have an offset of 28. Padding we calculated before was four and the alignment was 16. So as we can see clearly 28 plus four is 32. So it is properly aligned um, for the structure array. But let's go through these calculations here. So we'll have um, 28 plus align minus one is 15 bitwise and with not align minus one, which will be, I think we're going with five bytes here. So, so again, we have one, two, four, eight adds to 15. And this is, what do we have here? It doesn't, it doesn't matter if this is a larger structure or not. All this is doing is grabbing the upper bits above that, um, grabbing, grabbing the upper bits above that lower 32, if that makes sense. So I'll go through this again in a second. So here we have 43 and that. And then if we look at 43, 43 is 32, uh, not 15. Uh, hmm. Yeah, no, sorry. Yeah, not 16. Um, Eight, uh, not four, two and one. Uh, I worked this out on the spot. So we have uh, 32 plus eight is 40, 40 plus two is 42, 42 plus one is 43. I think that should actually be, why is this, why is this so hard for me? So we have two, uh, one, two, four, eight, 16, we actually need another one there, that's fine. So we take that bitwise and, and that produces 32. So then we have the correct alignment in this case. Cool. So yeah, there we have it. Now, um, just so we're because I did, I did kind of fudge this on the spot. Okay. So just so we're clear what this not align minus one does, all it does is clears the appropriate number of lower bits. We can have as many sort of upper bits as we want from the negation. It fills those upper bits with ones. Um, and then that just selects according with the number here bitwise. Um, so if I had a whole bunch of ones here, 43 can have as many zeros as we want because 43 does not contain 64 or 128. But under that bitwise, they'll just come out to zero. So it's all good. So we can think of this minus uh, negative align minus one as just a mask that sort of removes the lower bits. If that makes sense, because the alignment, sorry, the padding should always be a number less than alignment. So we add that in, then we just remove it. Anyway, been enough rambling. Hope this has been useful or interesting or a combination of the two. And I will see you again soon. Bye.